pocket. What is pocket? You know, I talk about it frequently. I mean, you could call it groove, but I think to me, in a large sense, what it means is In a large sense, what it means is alignment. So if you've ever felt like your back or your neck is out of alignment, something's just not right, and then it pops back in or it cracks or you know, you, any, anything that brings you back into alignment, you know that feeling of, of relief. Pocket is, is a little bit of that to me. It's just the sense that everything is in its right place. And it doesn't mean that it's uh, super, it has to be like, pocket can be elastic, but it's a feel thing. A lot of times to me it's it's a laid back thing, but the trick is it's laying back without dragging. So it's this it's this pulling you're behind the beat. It's something you just feel right here and I, it's a place that I just I just want to live there. Another way to think about pocket is like it's okay there's a grid. I've talked about this before. I think I, the vlog was called graph paper not staff paper, but the idea that you know when we think about music we think about it as it's written on this staff, which has five lines and five spaces, four spaces. I drew this, so they should all be even, right? The distance between all of these is expected to be the same. The problem is not enough time is devoted to time. Talking about the evenness between the left and right. So you wouldn't see this in a measure, but really, and this is more like graph paper, this is what's going on, or at least if you really want to care about your time, this is what needs to be going on. I mean, you can call this subdividing or whatever, but it's breaking up the beat into smaller parts and knowing where all those parts are so that you have control of whether you want to hit them spot on or a little bit ahead or a little bit behind. Another way to, to help visualize this is you can go to any DAW, like it, that stands for Digital Audio Workstation, like Pro Tools or Logic or Ableton. And when you take a look at the piano roll um, or keyboard view or whatever the heck they call it, let's just look. Okay, okay, so I just I just recorded this kick drum pattern. That's it, nothing fancy, and check it out. Okay, you can see right here, this is me just playing it in. Take a look right here. You see that? There is the, I wonder if I can make this bigger. This first beat where I just naturally hit, it's not right on the measure. See, that's the, the beginning of the measure. It's a little bit early. And then look at this one. It's a little bit late on the, uh, what, and of two? So you can see that right there. And then this one is, that one's pretty spot on. And if we listen to it, see we, we, met, we didn't even hear the first one because it was, it's late. But now if I go over here and go to time quantize and I choose a quantization value, and, and this is, yes, it's gonna take a little bit of the humanity out of it, that's true. But if I go 16th notes, or I could even go eighth note if I want to be clearer, let's just, this means it's gonna, it's gonna line up anything to the closest 16th note. I'm gonna hit quantize. The strength is on a uh, 100%, so it's gonna be very severe, but boom. See how it moved that? That's quantization, all right? Now everything is gonna be perfectly lined up. Hear that? Now you could do a lesser quantization value. I could say, hey, don't do 100%, but do like 70%. And it'll be just a little more human feeling, but. Ah, see, that first beat it doesn't make the cut. So I'll just go back to 100% for the heck of it. For simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna lay down a hi-hat on all four beats. Now let's take a look at how that looked. So you can see all of my lengths are different and they're hitting at slightly different places. Early, late, kind of on, kind of on, kind of on, but it's not clean. But you see this grid, you see these lines? That's the grid that I'm talking about that, that's the grid that's missing from this, from this traditional staff, which we don't see. But when you look at it in digital music, you do see those lines and you can line things up to it. So watch this, I'll quantize it to 100%, which again, it's gonna take all the humanity out of it, but watch, boom, quantized. In essence, my hi-hat is now my click, so I, I turned off the click. We have a very simple pattern. There's not even a backbeat on this. Maybe we should put a backbeat on there.
So I'm gonna quantize all of these. Again, not, I'm taking the humanity out of it. I'm just 100% quantization. But it's clean, it's clean. It's all on the grid. Now, I'll just put in a, a simple eighth note line, something so you can hear, and then we're gonna play with the timing. I'm literally just gonna lay down middle C on a Rhodes playing eighth notes, that's it. Again, here's our grid, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's close, but it's not perfect, so I'm gonna quantize it. Pretty boring, right? All right, so let's play with this a little bit. So this is eighth notes at 100% quantized to an eighth note grid with 0% swing factor. Very meticulously even, not a lot of swing or swagger, not exactly pocket, right? Let's swing it to 77%. Now this is gonna create a lopsided effect somewhat akin to a, like a, a dotted eighth, sixteenth note feel, which is not swing, but sometimes people think it is. Now let's put it at 66%, which would be closer to like a triplet subdivision. Better. Let's put it at 61, which is more like the golden mean, golden ratio. Not bad, but the problem is all of those eighth notes are still sounding, at least the downbeat ones are hitting right on the downbeat. So let's lay it back a little bit. What I'm gonna do now is take, I'm gonna take this line here, which is, you can see it's been lopsided a little bit, right? Like every one of the downbeats is smack on the grid, but look at the offbeats. It's a little bit behind. Now I'm gonna take the whole thing and start to drag it back a little bit. Well, actually let's go, well, here, let's go a little bit. You won't hear much. But you do start to hear some of that push and pull. I'm gonna drag it all back a little more. Let's go back even more. This is just before the offbeat. So this thin gray line right here would represent the, the next subdivision. So you hear that? I'm not trying to say that's how you lay back. It's just, I'm just trying to show you in a visual way, along with an oral way, what, what it looks like when you start to think about time in a grid fashion and how you can play on the beat, ahead of the beat, behind the beat, and the effect that has. And that's why I'm such a big advocate of practicing slow and even, and people always wanna rush and do things faster, and, and saxophonists especially are so in a hurry to play scales and things fast, and it's like they don't focus enough on the time, on the accuracy of the beat, the pulse. So if you actually practice more like a drummer would, your playing will, will improve exponentially. Exponentially, exponentially. Anyway, that's, uh, a brief overview of pocket from a MIDI grid perspective. It's obviously way funkier when done by humans.